Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And about a week or so ago, I reviewed a $179 3D printer. You took it out of a box, you turned it on. It was a really well-manufactured beginner printer. It was the Monoprice Delta Mini version 2, which is very different than the version 1. Today, I'm going to be looking at something completely different. Now, I've spent over a week with this 3D printer. And what I've discovered is the JG Maker Artist D Pro is quite a complex device. It's a complex device because it's able to print two colors at the same time. So there's a lot of technology involved in IDEX, independent dual extruder printers. I'm going to introduce you to this technology, the IDEX independent dual extruder technology with this printer, the JG Maker Artist D Pro, but I consider this a first look. I'm going to be producing a series of videos about IDEX printers, dual color, dual filament, dissolvable print filaments, multiple materials over the next couple months. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now, before I get started, I wanted to tell folks that might be watching a Dr. Vax video for the first time that Dr. Vax is a community of people that use technology to make things. I run this channel on YouTube. There are over 180 videos on the channel now. There's a discussion group. There's a website, all provided at no cost to the viewer. If you're interested in learning more about 3D printing, a little bit about woodworking, maybe some electronics, perhaps some programming, please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so you'll be notified about future videos. Now let's talk about the Artist D Pro. Well, before I get too far along with this video, I almost forgot something very important. I promised the folks at forum.drvax.com, there are over 1,200 people that are subscribed to that discussion group in the Dr. Vax community, that I'd give them a shout out. In particular, user Ender3R has done some remarkable work on the Artist D. He received his Artist D before I received my Artist D Pro, and he posted to the forum a lot of helpful hints that helped me with this review and helped other people that are new to multicolor 3D printing. I purchased this printer on Kickstarter about six to nine months ago. And because I purchased the pro version, an upgraded version of the printer, it took a little longer for it to arrive. It came about two weeks ago in this rather large box. Now I purchased it because the specs were spectacular. They were really good for the price, which was about half what the current retail price is. They're even still good for the current retail price. So let me tell you about some of those specs. First of all, it's a 32-bit motherboard, control board in the system. It's an MKS Robin Pro control board. That's a board you can go online and buy directly. And it's a very well-regarded 32-bit control board running Marlin 2.0. So yes, this printer uses open source firmware and JG Maker, once a printer is stable, always releases their version of the firmware to the public. Because it's an IDEX printer and there's more weight on the X-axis, they've used a linear rail for the X-axis. Instead of a piece of extruded aluminum where you have some rubber wheels and the hot end rolling on some rubber wheels, this uses a much more sophisticated architecture that's more stable, more precise, and generates less vibration. And so we can expect that at least on the x-axis, the print quality should be really very, very good. The pro version of this printer has a touch screen. The non-pro version has a dial that you use for controlling the printer. They both run the, 
the same overall firmware. This printer has TMC2209 stepper drivers. Those are the control chips that control the stepper motors. And the TMC stepper motor control drivers are well known for being uh, top rate and very quiet. Because they can do micro steps, they can control the stepper motor very precisely in a way that generates less noise. The primary difference between the 2208s and 2209s that I found in my research was the 2209s handle higher currents. I'm not sure why that's going to matter. It's the same stepper motors in both sets. And they have the ability to determine when the stepper motor jams into something. So that can be used to test where the bed is uh, without switches. But there are limit switches on this uh, printer. So I'm not sure what the advantage of the 2209s are. Perhaps um, they run a bit cooler because they're able to handle higher current. The printer has a removable spring steel print surface. That's a surface like the one I have in my Prusa i2 MK3 that I really like. And it's the type of surface I often add onto other printers. Now this printer is, is also quite large at 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 340 millimeters. So the combination of the scale and the dual extruders requires a printer that's well engineered. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now in full disclosure, I've already opened the box. So I'm not gonna have to cut it open. And the reason I'm doing this a second time is I forgot to plug in my microphone. So you wouldn't be able to hear me the first time around. So let's open it a second time. And I will pretend I'm opening it the first time. And when you open it up, there's a notice that there's a Facebook group where you can get support. There's an email address for support. And support is available 9 to 6.30 p.m. Beijing time. When you open it up, there is a real user's guide in here. It's quite elaborate. It includes the installation of Cura, the alignment of the various print heads. Because remember, this has dual print heads. And if I'm using them to print a two-color intermixed print, they have to be aligned to each other. So this uh, does look to be a uh, very, very nice manual um, and has detailed instructions. Then inside we have a toolbox. It has the typical tools. One of the things I noticed is that the USB connector is a printer style connector, much better than the micro USB connectors, much more robust. And the other thing I noticed right away was that it uses a full size SD card. These are all things that lead me to believe that this is a, a well engineered printer. So we'll put the tools aside for right now. Then we'll see there are these two little brush mechanisms. These wire brushes mount on the sides of the, of the print heads, and they're used so that when you're printing with one print head, the other print head is still hot. So it might be some dripping filament. So before it goes to print, it wipes across this brush to wipe off any dripping filament so that it doesn't end up on your print. Uh, a bunch of bolts and nuts, some cables. Let's see here. We have here the two filament reel holders and attached to them, it's an interesting design, it's attached right here, are the filament out detectors. You'll see that this is packaged extremely well. I'm gonna take the carriage out and that was no easier the second time than the first time. Part of the reason is this is very heavy. If you look here, you'll see you have two hot end assemblies, uh, complete assemblies. You have the linear rail here. There's a, a lot of metal here. Now, there are actually two reels of filament. They look like quarter size reels. And then here on the bottom, you'll see the base. The base is also quite heavy. So now I'm going to take the base out, go offline, assemble this, and then when we come back, we'll look at what the software setup looks like. We'll look at some initial prints. We'll watch it printing. And we'll look at print quality. And then discuss the different modes that can print in on an IDEX printer. The assembly of this printer was quite easy. 
Basically, you take this upper gantry, you slide it into two slots in the base, then you slide the base off the edge of the table so you can get underneath because it's quite heavy. I'm not sure you want to tip it on the side. You put two bolts in here, two bolts in here. That's the hardest part of the assembly. After doing that, you bolt on with single bolts the filament brush attachments, which are used to clean the print head as it comes back across after printing so that you don't get drips and drabs of filament when you move back out again. You attach the filament reel holders, the print heads, the extruders, all of the rest of this mechanical assembly are fully assembled. There are a number of cables to connect. All of the cables are labeled clearly with numbers on the cable end and where it plugs in. So it's relatively straightforward to get all the cables in the right place. Then comes the hard part. This print bed is quite large. It's a removable metal print bed. And the way it's assembled, there's actually a post right under the center here. So that post is fixed. So if you're bending up or down the corners, the post is staying centered. So the alignment procedure for this printer, which is software assisted, there's a menu item for leveling, and it will move the print head first to the center, then to each of the corners for you. The alignment procedure is always, and this is very important because it's different than other printers you may have used, always do the center first. So if there's no bolt there, if there's no knob, how do you adjust the center? Well, on the back, and I'll show you a picture on the screen, the filament out micro switch is triggered by a screw hitting a lever, and you can move that screw up and down. So you adjust that screw until the print head is at exactly the right height in the center. JG Maker supplies you with a plastic sheet, a plastic strip, to ensure you get that height correct. You probably also could use a sheet of paper. So align the center, then align the four corners, and then go around a couple times again. What I did is I did it once with the print bed cool, and I left it a little loose so the paper would move relatively freely, the plastic strip. Then I heated up the print bed to 60 degrees centigrade and did it again to make sure it was all locked in. So setting up the print bed, leveling it was the hardest part of the installation. The menu system on this printer is quite clear. It is a color touchpad, and I'll show you this up close in photos in the video as we move along. And it has preheat, move, home, print, extrusion, leveling, settings, and X mode. Let's talk about X mode first. In X mode, there are four modes. If you're using Cura, there are only three you're ever going to use. The first mode is full control. You will not use that. Full control assumes that the slicer will move the second print head out of the way, or the first print head out of the way to the parking position before it starts printing with the second print head. Cura does not have that capability. It might be possible to add it by putting certain commands into your G code. It's not built into Cura. It does appear that ID Maker might have that. I haven't tried that. The second option is auto park mode. That's the option you should use almost all of the time. What that says is anytime there's a G code command to switch print heads, and it's a T0 command, switch to tool one, print head one, T1 command, switch to tool one, the second print head, the second extruder, auto park the other extruder. So if your first print head is printing, and then it's there's a T1 in the G code, the first print head will park. These print heads are parked when they're over these bins with the brass brushes in them. 
So auto park mode is the mode you'll use most often. The other two modes are duplicate mode and mirrored mode. In duplicate mode, the printer will automatically print two of the same thing, printing in the same direction. In mirror mode, it will print two of the same things, but printing in the opposite directions. So I haven't tested dual mode and mirror mode yet. I wanted to concentrate on single color and multicolor printing. Now to get started with that, after you level the printhead, you set the printer to auto park mode, you have to slice a model. I'm gonna turn off the printer for a second here so that it's a bit quieter. On the SD card that comes with the printer, you'll find a copy of Cure for Windows. Unfortunately, that's just a standard 4.4 release of Cura. It doesn't have a profile for the printer built in, so I don't see any reason to use it, at least the version on my SD card unless I looked at it wrong, I would just take and download the latest version of Cura, and then I would install this printer into it from scratch. Let me show you how to do that. After installing Cura with your standard operating system procedure, start up the program. You're then going to go to this little arrow next to, it's actually a less than sign, next to your printer name, in my case I used it for an ANET ET4 last, and click on Manage Printers. Then click on Add, select Add a Non-Network Printer, and scroll down just a little bit till you see Custom. Give your printer a name, we're going to call this the Artist D Pro, click Add. Now, we need to set the X size to 300, the Y size to 300, the Z size to 350, rectangular bed, and click on heated bed. For now, you can leave the start code and end code that's defaulted in Cura. It will work. In a future video, I'll talk about creating optimal G code for a dual extruder printer. I now need to go to number of extruders and set that to two. You'll now see there are two extruders listed here. Extruder number one is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I need to set the diameter of the material to 1.75. Extruder two is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I need to set that to 1.75. I do not need to change the nozzle offsets. That's handled in firmware in the printer. And I didn't change the fan number and it seemed to work properly. Then I'm going to click next. Now you'll notice, let's go back there for a second. On the extruders, there's extruder start and end code. Theoretically, that's where we could put G code to park the other extruder if you wanted Cura to handle that. We're going to use auto park mode, so that's not necessary. Now I'm going to go to close and close. I could use one of these standard product files and I'd probably get an adequate print, but there are some profiles supplied by JG Maker. So if I go to their website, I go to support and document download, you'll see for the Artist D and the Artist D Pro, and other printers, a variety of information. One of the things you'll see right away is you'll see firmware and the firmware source code. JG Maker completely embraces the open source community. The other thing you'll see is that the firmware for the RSD Pro is different. That's because it uses 2809 versus 2808 stepper motors and it uses a different type of sensor for the x-axis, so the firmware is different. So you cannot interchange them. But the profiles are the same. Now, I've tried a couple of these. The one I ended up using that seemed to work was Artist D PLA Cura Profile. So we're going to take and download that to our computer here, and that's now in our download directory and then I'll close this. Okay, now 
the profile isn't a Cura profile. It's instead a Cura print file. And the current version of Cura has the ability to create a profile from a print file. So we don't go to profile import to use it. Instead, we just go to file, open files, go to downloads and open that file. And we're gonna say open as project. It's telling us that it has a uh, custom update. We're going to say open and it's now loading in that file. Now, you'll notice it's giving this a different filament name than it had before. It, the filament name doesn't really matter. The temperatures and those things matter, and we'll look at that a bit together. The advantage was that they also put the color as green. Now you can manually change that if you chose to. So let's look at a couple things here. The first is you'll see that we have settings for the first extruder and the second extruder, and they can be different. You'll also notice down here, if we go to materials, they have temperatures that are relatively hot. Now I found these temperatures were much too hot for the Matter Hacker Build PLA I was using. So I moved these down to 200 and I switched this one down also to 200. Now what is standby temperature? When the printhead is parked, that's the temperature the printhead is going to stay at. Why did I set it to 200 versus lower? Well, if you set it lower, when it moves the printhead back over the print, it's going to have to heat it up to the full temperature before it starts printing. That may cause filament to drip from it. I'd rather filament be dripping into the waste bin over here on the side, so I keep my standby temperature and my main temperature the same. But you'll notice here, it didn't change the second extruder, so we have to change those also. And there we go. Now, in fact, I think I'm going to make the initial print temperature also 200 and final 200. We'll just keep the temperature the same all of the time. Now, the other thing is there are specific settings for dual filament, dual extruder printers. So if we go all the way down here to dual extrusion, now there are more options here. We're not seeing them because we're on custom. I'm going to go to all. And now if we go over to here, we'll see that there are a series of options. How much filament to retract when you go to park the nozzle. I've actually reduced that to four millimeters and it seems to be okay. And the speed of those retractions. There are other options to print a prime tower. That's a little tower it'll put in the corner of your print bed where it will prime the nozzle over there. It will heat it up over there before it moves it back. I didn't use that. The final thing I like to do is turn combing to not in skin. Now what combing says is when you're traveling, that means you're not printing, but you're moving the print head. If you're traveling over an area that was already printed, don't do a retraction. Let it drip, doesn't matter, let it string. But when you're moving over an area that doesn't have a print, then do a retraction. Now I turn that off for not in skin because you don't want lines of filament dripping on the very top of your model, which will mess up your model. So those are basically the things that I set. Then I go up here and I say, create a profile from the current settings. I give it a name and we're going to call this artist D pro PLA 0.20. Okay, now use Cura the same way you've always used Cura with one difference I'll point out in a minute. So if you're printing a single color model, you just go ahead and load that model. You can zoom in, zoom out, 
This works the same way it has always worked. And you can adjust any of the settings you want over here, remembering that you have two nozzles. But with a single color model, you're not going to use the second nozzle at all. And so what we're going to do is click up here, click on the second nozzle, and disable it. And then we can close that. And what you'll see here on the side is there's only one nozzle shown now. Then we would go ahead and slice this, load it on the printer. The SD card is a full-size SD card. It goes right in the slot on the side here. Very easy to use. And we'd go ahead and print it. And we'll look at these models in a moment. Now, if you want to use duplicate or mirror mode, you have to put the model off-center on your build plate. So instead of centering it on your build plate, you would move it to off-center so that when it's duplicated, there's room for both models. Then you would go to the front panel of your printer and switch from auto park to duplicate or mirror. Very simple. How do you handle a two-color model? Well, let me show you that because that is a bit trickier. I'm going to go here and I'm going to load a multicolor model. So let's find one here. And uh, let's take this tree frog. And we'll look at this print in a moment. But here's a two color model. So you'll see here, if we rotate this around, there are actually two models loaded here. We can move this over a little bit so you can see it more clearly for the two different colors. So I take the second color and I want to enable the second extruder. So I have to go back up here. Now I have to enable that second extruder and then I can click on a model, click on the extruder, and you'll see it's a different color now. Now I can click on the first model, hit shift, click on the second, so they're both selected. I can go to edit merge models and we are now all set for a two color print. So I slice this model, I make sure I'm in auto park mode, I go ahead and print it, and the slicer will have inserted T0 and T1 commands to print the two colors, resulting in a print that looks like this. So those are slicer basics. There will be, as I mentioned, follow on videos where we'll cover all of these details in quite a bit more detail. And I'm going to be reviewing additional IDEX printers, and you'll see how the concepts apply to all of them. So let's uh, turn off the computer right now. Let's look at some models and understand some characteristics of the models. The first model I printed was a calibration cat. Um, and it printed well, except that the profile I had shown you was originally set to 210 degrees, so it came out a little bit sloppy, and there was one extrusion issue. Now, I assume that was a catch in my filament reel, but we'll look at that in a little more detail in a minute. Then I did something fun. I went into Tinkercad, I loaded this model, and I split it into a tail and a model. And this printed properly, as you can see on the screen, but it was very fragile. When I dropped this once on, now this is a ceramic tile floor, uh, the tail snapped right off, and it looked a little messy. I thought maybe I had the temperature still not optimal. So I went and I downloaded from Thingiverse a multicolor model. Now, at a distance, this looks spectacular. Up close, there's still like blurring between the layers, almost as if they overlap on one side and a little gap on the other. And there was a bit too much stringing, which once again, I attributed to temperature. But this is clearly something I could not print on a single color printer. So then I decided to do something a little more sophisticated. And I decided to do a fancy vase, which I had actually scaled up because I wanted to try a big vase on this big printer. And this is severely under extruded. As a matter of fact, you can see here it's falling apart. So I thought, what's wrong? 
Well, the next thing I did is I attached a computer to this printer and I loaded a G code sender, a program uh, that I've done other videos on. And the G code sender is a Chrome, Google Chrome app you can use to send commands to a printer. You can also use Matter Control from Matter Hacker, um, and there are a number of other front ends you can use to send commands over a USB cable to your printer. So I did an extrusion test, and I'll link to a video that will show you how to do that. And I found the extruder was under extruding by 20%. That's a lot. So I adjusted the extruder multiplier, and I saved that into the EEPROM, and I tested it again, and it was extruding the proper amount. So then, because this experience was pretty bad, I thought I'd print a small vase that I know prints very, very well. And you'll see this up close. This is almost a perfect print. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, these black dots here, you'll see in the close-up, that's where I went to the front panel of this printer, and I increased the print speed to 200%. I can't tell the difference. It increased the speed, but this still printed well. Then, you know, I thought I'll try something that's really hard. Vase mode prints, this was printed in vase mode in Cura on Matter Hacker Build PLA at a 0.2 layer height, printed at 65 millimeters per second. I filled it with water because vase mode prints generally leak. This holds water perfectly. That means my extrusion is exactly nailed, that when I adjusted the firmware, it solved the problem. So then I thought I'd try something a bit more fun. I thought I'd try printing one of these items that is sort of a toy where it's supposed to bend and move. And the print looks pretty nice, but it's glued together. So I looked at the joints carefully, and they're closer on one side, glued to one side, with a gap on the other. So remember we were talking about the fact that Dual extruder 3D printers are complex because you have to make sure the print heads are perfectly lined up. Mine weren't aligned properly. So I downloaded from Thingiverse a print that you can print, and I'll show you a close-up of this, to check the alignment of the print heads. And what I found was that the right side print head was over about a millimeter further than it should be. It was off by about a millimeter. That explains the blurring in this print because the edges are actually overlapping. So then I went to the front of the printer, I'll show you a picture of this screen, and I adjusted the offsets. Because in the firmware, you can set the offsets to make sure it's aligned in this direction, aligned front and back, and aligned up and down. So I adjusted the X direction offsets until they lined up perfectly, and then I printed another one, and it printed really well. So now I have the printer extruding perfectly and aligned perfectly, and you still get stringing when you print with multiple colors, but this is pretty nice. So then I decided to reprint this vase. I didn't scale it up this time. Once again, a gorgeous vase. Now, so we've demonstrated we can absolutely install, set up, and configure this printer. Is it for beginners? Once again, it's not. I spent a couple days, and I've worked with over a dozen different 3D printers getting it set up right. Now, I hope I've given you enough information to get started. In follow-up videos, I'm going to take you through these steps step by step. Overall, this is just a well-designed printer, and I would absolutely recommend it to someone who's willing to invest the time in learning about IDX printing in general and learning about this printer specifically. Now, would I buy the Pro model? So I've only tried the Pro model. I will tell you this printer is extremely quiet. You can see in this video, and I'll turn the sound on for a minute, so what you'll hear is just the fans.
So you hear that you didn't hear any stepper motors. The fans are loud, but you didn't hear any stepper motors. Because the fans are loud, the cooling is excellent. You get really beautiful, beautiful prints. So I think the upgraded stepper motors might make a difference. I'm not sure. I haven't tried the other one, which also has stepper motors that are relatively quiet. I think the optical switches on the X-axis are an improvement. It does have a Meanwell power supply, better regulated power, may or may not make a, a big difference. But the color LCD is just very easy to use and it's one less thing to break. So I think it's probably worth the extra money for the Pro model. Well, folks, I hope you learned a lot today. Subscribe. There are going to be a whole bunch of additional videos, including a review of another IDEX printer in the next few weeks. It's a bit more expensive than this one. It's fully enclosed. It's from a mainline manufacturer. I think you'll find that interesting. I'm going to be talking about how to create multicolor prints. I'm going to be looking at other slicers for use with IDEX printers. And I think we're going to continue to learn a lot of things together. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, let's continue learning together.